Okay, so so what is your position on Islam then? Do you have any issues with it? Do you, are you do you know about it? Have you researched? Do you what do you know? I've done. Quite you have a questions? Okay, um, I don't know. Is it, is it all right if I Google throughout the con like the conversation? Is that fine? Yeah, for what reason? It depends on the reason. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, no problem. I'm not. I'm not uh, the most knowledgeable on things, so I, I might. Yeah, that's fine. To help me um, as I'm going. Through. It depends on what you're doing. Yeah, but go ahead. Yes. Um, so at least my main gripes uh, with Islam are kind of similar with Christianity. Um, mm -hmm. Like the two that I can think of um, at the moment, or I'll start mm -hmm. with one so we can make it a bit more structured, is mm -hmm. the account of how long we've been on earth for, or at least how old the earth is, um, and as far as is how it is in both Christianity and Islam. At least with, with Christianity, 100%, it isn't correct. They say we've been here for only, what, 6,000 years? And, I've, and I've, from what I've researched, the count is a bit similar in as far as what's recorded or mentioned in, in Islam from what I've, I've researched so far. The Quran doesn't talk about how old the earth is. Well, not, not so much what it mentions directly, but the calculation of um, the amount of time each prophet was around for and the time in between each. Prophet does just not do mention that as well. At all? Well, okay, refer, tell me exactly what you're referring to. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to listen. But before doing that, what do you, how do you think the, old, uh, the earth is? How old the earth is? How do you think? I don't have an exact number that I think is is plausible, but I say over fifty thousand years at least is is plausible. Just from and, like, like the, mm -hmm. and why do you believe that? Because of uh, carbon dating and and the rings of a tree. Those are my two uh, criteria. I'd say so. Okay, so so you're saying due to carbon dating, you're saying uh, what fifty? What what what? How many? Six thousand years. That is too short a time for us to have been on this earth. We don't say six thousand years. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's more like okay. Go ahead, tell me where does it in Islam mention that 6,000 years or less? I'm happy to listen, uh, go ahead. Can you hear me clearly, sorry? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Where does Islam say the age of the earth is 6,000 years or something similar to that, in which then makes you says, okay, that, does, that is incorrect according to reality, that, does not, that contradicts reality. So go ahead and present. Where does Islam say that? It, it doesn't say it directly. Um, just to, to be sincere, I'm not trying to be insincere. It doesn't say it directly. But if you just add up all the years that are accounted for for each prophet, just till you get to this time, or at least where, till, where till does you get Islam to, give to you a timeline? Where is the where does Quran the Quran give you the timeline of the age of the earth, or where does Islam give you that that timeline? I did I did do some research, and it, there's no specific time that it's given, and it's quite ambiguous. There's a period of time which is quite ambiguous that could span over billions of years if we include the time when we went on earth. So I'm I'm not too uh, worried or fussy about that point. Because I did learn a bit and realize I was wrong. Isn't that what I said to you? <laughs> Didn't I tell you that there is no, there is no timeline, right? But you were saying 6,000 years and this and this. That, that was the point I'm making. The Quran doesn't... It is irrelevant information. Therefore, the Quran doesn't need to tell you. Whether it is billion years to billion, three billion, how does that influence your, our life? How does that change our behavior and our connection with God? It has nothing to do with, with uh, the purpose of life. And therefore, Allah does not mention it. There's no need for Allah mentioning it to begin with. I see, no, 100%. I think I took that misconception from Christianity and just like slapped it onto Islam without doing enough research, I'd say. That, that's fine. Okay. Do you have, you said other, least, other questions? You said you, you don't, you're not worried about that point. So we go to the next one, yeah? 100%, 100%. So okay. then my issue is to do with um, the Islamic view of like idolatry. I think you guys call it shirk. If I'm not mistaken, please don't. Mm -hmm. um, like I might butcher the pronunciations here and there. But no, you're okay. If, if at, at least at least when it comes to uh, uh, facing the Qibla whenever you pray, and it has to face the 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 Kaaba, which is like a square object. It's not it's not it's a specific square object that exists in this world. Wouldn't that also uh, like count as shirk? If let's say having a painting or a sculpture in your house counts as, as what shirk. is the Kaaba? What is the Kaaba? Um, I just uh, I only understand it to be a historical. Um, have you prayed uh, in a Have you prayed in a church before? I used to when I was Christian. I did. So when you pray in the church, do you pray to the church? Um, or or is the church considered to... to be the house of God or the house of where people come and pray? Which one is it? Uh, well, at least at least people would the say synagogue... directly it's the house of God. Yeah, the yeah the Quran calls the Kaaba the house of God. You know. Allah says in the first house to be placed for the house of God, the first house of God to be placed is the Kaaba. We view the Kaaba as a house of God. We don't, it's just like the masjid is a house of God, the mosque. The Kaaba is similar. And that's why uh, Muslims pray inside the Kaaba as well. Not mm -hmm. only that, the, the, the Muslims go on top of the Kaaba. 
So if they were holding the Kaaba as a, you know, a holy idol, as a, you're not going to step it on top of it with your feet and walk all over and you go inside of it and pray. This is just a Christian kind of, <laughs> a very ridiculous Christian. Honestly, it's a very ridiculous one. It's a very ridiculous Christian mm -hmm. argument. But this is a house of God for Muslims. Kaaba is a house of God. Muslims pray uh, inside of the Kaaba, pray outside of the Kaaba. And Muslims go on top of the Kaaba to, call, to do the call of the prayer. Bra Bilal, which was a, mm -hmm. a, a slave that time, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and he used to go on top of the Kaaba and he used to, to, to do the Adhan. And uh, you have the Muslims all uniting in one direction of prayer, which is that house of God, the first house of God. They all unite in one direction of prayer towards the, one, the first house of God. That's it. In fact, do you know the Kaaba was historically uh, uh, destroyed and rebuilt multiple times? Under Muslim rule. 100%. 100%. So under Muslim rule. I didn't know that. Under Muslim rule. We're not talking about, we're talking about under Muslim rule multiple times. Until he killed the, the time of, of Imam Malik and then Imam Malik said that uh, we don't want people to lose respect for the Kaaba as the house of God. So we keep building it and rebuilding it, building it and rebuilding it. Because the Prophet mm -hmm. he said in a narration that if only if the, the people were not attached to the Kaaba, he would, he would destroy it and then build it on the foundations of Ibrahim. Right? He said that. So he didn't do it because they were new Muslims. He said, Hadith or Adim Islam. He's just newly accepting Islam. So they would not understand why the Prophet is doing it. So he said right now is not the, the time. So one uh, a caliphate later on did it. And then another caliphate said, okay, we're going to destroy it and we bring it back again to the same way it was at the time of the Prophet. So they destroyed it and, and brought it back multiple times. And look, anyone who views like the Kaaba as like some sort of this, this is not something that Muslims would do in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Just look at the history of Muslims of how, how they, they, they view the Kaaba and how, what they call it, what the Quran calls it, etc. And the fact, as I said, that they literally built it, rebuilt it multiple times themselves. I see. I see. It's a house of God. At least... It's a house of God mm -hmm. that we believe uh, uh, Abraham uh, either built or rebuilt. There's a disagreement between the scholars. We, some scholars believe that it was first built with Adam. It was the first house to be built. With, with Adam built it. And then it was destroyed. And then Abraham built on the foundations because the Quran says that he's raising the foundations. It doesn't say that he's building from the beginning. So it's, it, what gives us that significance is the first house of God. The first house of God, the first house to be placed for the people for worship. That's our, that is the significance of the Kaaba for us as Muslims. And as I said, you can pray inside the Kaaba because it's considered as a house of God, just like the, the, the masjid is considered the house of God or any other uh, mosque or, or the, the church is a house of God for the Christians or the synagogue is a house of God for the Jews. Or, but at least no one, no one is going to say you're doing idol worship there because who you're praying to is what matters. You're praying to God alone. You're not praying to anyone else. When you are doing Hajj, around the Kaaba, you say, Labbaika, Allahumma labbaik, labbaika la sharika lak, you have no partner. You're literally mm. saying that Allah has no partner when you're doing Hajj. This is the, the, the chanting that people do when they are around the Kaaba, that there's only one God worthy of worship. If Islam that's the case, and, if, if, you know, Islam sorry, sorry and I, to cut you off. Yeah, hmm? go ahead. But but like, I, was gonna the the I was just going to say the last thing, I was just going to say the last thing, is that the main foundation of Islam is Tawheed, which is pure monotheism. To try to insinuate that Muslims have any sort of of idol worship is the exact opposite of what Muslims believe, literally. Yes, go ahead. Hmm. Um, at least if that's the case, then what's the issue with uh, having, for example, let's say a sculpture in your house that you're not praising, but it's just, it's just there as a sculpture that's in your house. Or for example, let's say it's the church in, or like a, a Catholic church and they have a cross or like a whole um, a, a sculpture that resembles what they see as Jesus on a cross. No, but because they that? do believe that is, that is, like, for example, the, the, the Hindus that have these sculptures, they believe these are representations of actual uh, uh, forms of God. They don't just believe this is just a, a sculpture. And the cross is not just a piece of wood or a piece of metal or it is, it signifies in their belief, God literally dying on the cross. So it is associating partners with God. We don't believe the Kaaba is, a, this, that's the difference now. We don't believe the Kaaba is a, it's either an image of another God. Or itself is God, or is signifying another idea or entity that we worship other than Allah. This is the problem with shirk. So, so it's it's a complete different analogy, like there. And what about a sculpture? Just a, if you're not worshiping it, you just like yeah, a sculpture. Artist, for example. Yeah, a sculpture is prohibited in Islam, but not for that specific for for many reasons. Like for example, uh, a sculpture is is prohibited uh, in the Hadith of the Prophet is that people are trying to imitate, create a creation like mm. Allah. They are trying to imitate or make something like Allah. They're trying to compete with God in his creation in a way. There is a prohibition there. And also the idea that people uh, later on started worshipping them. So in the beginning, the, the, the sculptures were there of righteous men at the time of Noah, where polytheism mm -hmm. first started. And then after that, then people started like going to the graves of these people. 
because the sculptures were there. And then they started giving them gifts. And then the next generation started thinking, okay, these gifts were like, you know what, for good luck for them to bring us closer to God. And gradually this happened. So destroying... Uh, so misinterpretation, uh, basically. Mm. Yeah, no. So gradually they turn into polytheism. Yeah, over time turns into polytheism. This idea of making idols and sculptures and this and that of humans or individuals or entities. It's prohibited in Islam for these two reasons. It's creating a creation other than Allah and also this idea of gradually turning people into polytheism. But it's again, yeah, the Kaaba is a complete like different story. Okay, yeah. What else? But it's, um, it's, it's uh, it surprises me that this ridiculous claim actually people like like believe like so. It, in anyways, it's good to address it anyways. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's not so much that I have this claim, it's just trying to understand the, the wisdoms behind it, um, mm. behind why this is okay, that's okay, and why yeah. it's demonizing one religion and not another. That's um, fine. But you know, the Bible says my, that you shouldn't have idols and pictures and statues as well, but people still do. That. If you read the Old Testament, it's explicit on that. You should not have any images or, or statues of God. It's not just Islam, right? It's a teaching, this is a monotheistic teaching, but the Christians don't follow it. Those who make uh, uh, pictures of Jesus, and the, they don't follow their own book. I see. The Jewish people who okay, no, that, that does that does clear it up. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Because I do I do agree that if it is a monotheistic religion, then there's nothing of this world that should be um, exalted and and praised. So I do agree with that take. Just yeah. going uh, to the beginning of the conversation, I do believe in a higher power, and I do believe that if there is a higher power, we shouldn't be worshiping something that's off this earth uh, per se and giving uh -huh. that, that praise when we should be giving him praise directly, or not him, but okay. like just that entity praise. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, at least on, on my side, those were my major gripes and the things I didn't like understand fully. I remember I mentioned I was, I was on the fence. I'm not, I used to be agnostic, but at the moment, I'm just trying to seek as much truth as I can and get to mm -hmm. the conclusion of what I think, what I have conviction about is true, I'd say. Okay, so about God, you, you said you, you're a deist. Like, are you sure about God's existence, essentially? About Islam, exactly. that's what I was asking you, I asked you after that, I said, Okay, about Islam, what is, what is the contentions that you would have? You ask these questions now about the, the age of the earth and then the, the Kaaba, etc. And, and mm -hmm. the last thing that you ask. So these are the, the questions that you have. So other than that, you don't have any contentions with Islam is what you're saying. At least I would, but after I did more research, at the same time, I don't. And it might sound like a contradiction to say that, but let me yes. try to explain it at least. Because uh -huh. at least from my perspective, even though um, I wasn't religious just before uh, this call, at least, um, I was religious before. And I was of the understanding that if there's anything that the text that you believe in says you must do, then you must do it. Mm -hmm. And at least with Islam, even, even though like, I still have the same, sorry, I still have the same opinion that if there's something in the text that you have to do, that's in the text, you have to do it. And it's just a matter of adjusting to all the changes in, in, in lifestyle. If I do uh, go on to adopt Islam from here, um, just things, for example, like I, I was a, a, a draw. I used to draw quite a lot, um, mm -hmm. a lot of like stick figures and do a lot of art and not mm -hmm. stick figures, but like people, I used to draw people, realistic objects. So animals, and I'm sure there's, there's an issue with that. And then at least I used to also be a musician or well, I still am a musician to some degree. And I'm sure there's, there's obviously an issue with that, which reminds me of one other question I do have. Um, at least is Nasheed allowed if let's say you're saying positive things, but they're not direct quotes from the Quran. Is that, is that okay? okay? Let, me, let me help you the idea of music uh, simply. I'll, I'll, I'll clarify and simplify it for you. What is prohibited is musical instruments. Musical instruments like piano, guitar, all of, drums, all of these musical instruments. With one simple exception, something called the duff, which is only to be used by women in celebration, uh, which is a very like uh, small, very small exception. But the general rule is that the musical instruments are prohibited. So anything that would contain musical instruments is prohibited in Islam. Now, uh, the second idea now we would have, because music is different things. It's musical instruments. It is a singer and words. This is what music is. So we said musical instruments is prohibited. Now we have the singer. If the singer is, is a female and her voice can cause seduction to males and this and that, that's not per permissible for men to be listening to. And if it is a man then who is just singing, uh, who's, who's just singing words, and then now we're moving on to the third thing, which is the words. And these words are good words. Not, not like the first hundred hit music albums of today, all talking about gangs <laughs> and body parts and this and that. No. If he's actually, yeah, if he's actually yeah, saying good 100%, words. 100%, 100%. Yeah, if he's actually saying good words, things that are uplifting and this and that. Like in war, sometimes we have men singing to encourage other men and these type of things. This, are permiss this is permissible in Islam. There is nothing that would say this is uh, haram, this is not permissible. So that would be permissible if he's saying good words. 
uh, poetry, saying something good, whatever it is, it is permissible. It's just like Imam Shafi'i, he said, he said that the, the poetry is, to, is speech. The good of it is good and the bad of it is bad. So there is good and bad speech, right? You can say either good things or you can say bad things. So this is the breakdown of the idea of basically of music. And at least uh, with, let's say, let's say it's art and let's say it's, for example, for example, photography. If you do alter the pictures in any way, would that count as, as making a, a creation against uh, the creator? I, I forget what the specific it, it, Yeah, are, it will be but... considered something else, which is, which is uh, changing the creation of Allah. It will be changing the creation mm. of Allah. So the, if that altering is severe altering, Look, the, 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 uh, the, the, the kind of, of boundaries of the altering or where you stop when it comes to the altering is where you're changing something that does not exist in the creation. So you're changing into something that is not in the creation now. So you're changing into something else other than the creation of Allah. You're changing the creation of Allah. And we believe that's literally the job of, of Satan. That's what Satan does. And, and that's what, what mm. Satan says in the Quran that he will do. That I will command them. They will change, then they will change the creation of Allah. I will command them and then they will change the creation of Allah. That's what we see today, yeah? Boys and girls, who's a 100%. boy, who's a girl. I don't know how many genders you want, you want to talk about today, right? In the Western uh, society, but this is <laughs> no, a change in the creation of anyone, but I, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no we, I disagree with it as well, but I'm just not trying to be disrespectful, 100%. But this is the thing. The, the people in the West have become so soft that, that to say that you don't agree with something have become a form of disrespect. That's not disrespect. If I say, okay, Allah created us, I'm a Muslim, I believe Allah created us as men and women. And there's only men and women that Allah created us with. That's as simple as that, that's what I believe. How is that? Why You believe otherwise, you can believe otherwise. That's not, that doesn't mean I'm disrespecting you. But this is objective reality. When we, we, when we are see, born, 100%. we're either male or female. We're a well, man or a woman. So much, it's yeah. not so much the objection you presented, it's just the fact that I laughed at the, the example. Yeah, okay. Like yeah, I'm not trying to mock them as well. But I mean, yeah, it can, some things can be so strange that they can be funny. When someone says to you, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a wolf and then starts wo walking for, for <laughs> uh, you know, and then walking in school and then, and then certain, certain classes right now in the West is where you have children literally identifying as, uh, as, as animals. And then the teachers cannot do anything because it's against the law. So then what they do is that mm. they bark and they meow and they moo and they, all, they, they, they moo and that's what the class is literally. And the <laughs> teacher cannot teach them anything. And it's not against the law because, you know, under the law, you're supposed to be able to do these things. So some things can be ridiculous to the extent in which you would laugh, yes, because it's opposing the reality. So uh, that's not necessarily wrong from, from, for you to do, I would say. I see. No, that, that, yeah. I agree with that fully, 100%. I do, I agree yeah. with that fully. You should, that's why you should be um, a Muslim, you see, because only Islam is standing firm on this ground, you know? <laughs> when it comes to this, these changes of this and that, you, if you see a religion opposing this, and standing on the ground is Islam, because it is a religion of truth coming from the Creator. If you are with these similar values, then you should be a Muslim, you know? But as you said, the only thing stopping you now, or the only thing there is that the changes in your life that you will have to do, and, 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 and that because you're already doing different things that you see from an Islam point of view, uh, Islam prohibits. 100%. Um, at least it's not so much, it's like it's, it's stopping me, but I just understand that these are steps. So at least if yes. I'm going to be starting, what, what are mm -hmm. the steps I should take? Considering it's mm -hmm. Ramadan, and I'm, I'm, I have no problem with fasting when it comes to that. Like mm -hmm. just water and food, I don't mind that, but it's the, the, also the other spiritual things that come with it and, and all, the, all the duties you have, to, you, have to, you have to partake in. Like for example, mm -hmm. if it's going to the masjid, mm -hmm. that might be a bit difficult for me, like in as far as finding a community within the short amount of time before it starts. Whether, whether you become a Muslim or not, I would recommend even people watching that are close to Islam, you can start fasting, like you can try it. There's no, nothing, nothing to lose, right? It is beneficial, whether you're a Muslim or you're not a Muslim. Even if you look at it from a, pu a purely physical or, mater or materialistic side, still a beneficial thing for you as a human being, you know? And, and yeah, uh, so it's not eating and drinking, but also no sexual intercourse. It's also your temper and not cursing, not saying bad words, not getting angry at your family members. It's a lot more. So fasting is like keeping that perfect, trying as much as possible to stay in the best pleasing to God's state as you can in that period in mm. which you're fasting. So that is, that is the, the essence of fasting. So you can try, uh, of course, and there's nothing uh, to lose there. And anytime, you know, you're ready, you want to become Muslim, you know, you're welcome. <laughs> well, what do I have to do? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a very simple thing. It's, it's a testimony of faith. It, it, but what matters is whether you believe it or not. Is, is you testify as only one deity worthy of worship, Allah. And Allah is only uniquely one, independent. Does not have children, does not have fathers or grandfathers or grandmothers, you know. Not three in one, not four in one, just uniquely one, right, worthy of worship. And, and independent and nothing there's nothing like Allah so Allah is completely unique in his existence he's uniquely one 
and to believe that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger that, that Allah sent among other messengers like Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, all of them are messengers of God that came with messages to their people. And the last and final messenger is the Quran, is the, the, which come in to guide my, mankind and bring them to their creator and give them absolute monotheism towards the creator. If you believe these things, then you're ready to become Muslim, you know? Is you, if you testify, but could it's I, called the Shahada. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But could I ask you a question though, just to, just to see yeah, 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 yeah. what your level of, of sincerity is, at least I have seen the, like, the prof a few of the prophecies that, um, that uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, has, mm -hmm. has like, stated. Or at least like from the research I saw, I didn't read the Quran directly, but mm -hmm. I just saw the uh, like a Google list and even some of your videos that mentioned some of the things. Mm -hmm. At least is there anything that you think is either like wrong or hasn't happened yet that just just to see if there's any any doubt? Because no, I hasn't try to happened. look if there's anything that got wrong. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing that is wrong. It's impossible. If there is like, how can I be a Muslim? You know? <laughs> like, because. The Quran says that the Prophet Muhammad does not speak of his own. He speaks as a revelation from God. So when he speaks about the future, or when he speaks about matters to do with God, because he says he doesn't know the future. So when he speaks about the future, he's mm. speaking on behalf of God. So it's, if, if there is one prophecy that, that about the future that is false, then he cannot be a messenger of God. So there is no such thing that exists. Now about things that didn't happen yet, there are pro uh, prophecies of the end times, the things that are apocalyptic, you know, that will be literally like uh, worldwide events, like the, the coming of the Antichrist, Jesus coming back, these type of things which are like, we, we call the, the major signs of the end of, of the Day of Judgment. So these are yet to happen, because 100%. when they start happening, they will fall like dominoes and then the Day of Judgment will, will commence, the resurrection and then accountability and, and everything. So there are these ones, yeah, some of these that didn't happen, of course, because we're not at that time yet. But other than that, anything else the Prophet said, there is no such thing that, it's impossible for you to find something that didn't happen. I see. Um, yeah, I just found it spooky how, how correct a lot of them were, considering the amount of like information he had at that time. It just, it, 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 it kind of pushed me to want to do more research um, and learn a bit more as I went along. Let me ask this then. He said, this is not from him, this is from God. Now, is it spooky, to use your own term, that God knows this information and he reveals this information? There's nothing spooky about that because God knows the future, <clears throat> literally. Yeah. So, I'm asking you now, give me an alternative possibility. If he wasn't truly a messenger of God, how would he uh, possibly, logically or rationally, come about and bring uh, this information? Um, not to say I believe this take that I'm about to mention now, but uh -huh. you could argue it's vague enough for it to somehow be misinterpreted as true. Like if you say, for example, with the Christians and the Old Testament and New Testament, if they twist the, the interpretation as far as they like, you can make it true. I'm not saying that's what I think. I get what but... you're saying, but that's not the case of the, of the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad. They're, they're direct and clear. In fact, you have of these prophecies that are time bound exactly with time frame and when exactly is going to happen. Like the prophecy to do with the Roman and the Persians. And, and then you have the individual specific, what will happen to that specific individual. Like Abu Lahab and, and, and the, other person, the other person who is following the Prophet, Suraq ibn Malik, yeah, I'm just forgetting his name. And Suraq ibn Malik was, trying, was a bounty hunter. The Prophet told him he will hold the bracelets of the Persian king. So these are individual specifics. And there's other, as I said, that are time specific. And otherwise they are people specific, like the, the, the people building the building. What, they, what, what people, the Arabs, Bedouin Arabs, what they will be do, doing, building tall buildings. These are all specific prophecies. So they, they're not something that you would need to twist in any way, shape or form. And that's why when we say them, we just mention them. And then people understand these prophecies. We don't need to interpret them and explain them like you would have Christians doing, you know, Six, seven, eight, now and look, the seven actually is this, is the six, is this year. Is it, you know, I'm sure you heard this nonsense before, right? So, no, 100%, 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we don't need to do this nonsense here, what you mentioned, because the prophecies are clear of the Prophet. Mm. But the, the question is, how could he know these, all of them? And they're tens. And they're, they're no, clear and they're specific. For sure, for sure. And, but mm. you give me an alternative explanation, though. I, I, really, I really can't. Um, I I that's it. Then, 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 then the you, interpretation, I'm, I'm a bit stumped. Yeah. Yeah. Then you'd accept that he's a prophet, a messenger of God. It's the only option that is there. And then it would make perfect sense for someone to become Muslim because if he is a messenger of God, then what he says is true. If he says that we have mm -hmm. to accept this, or when we die, X, Y, and Z will happen to us, then we have to accept this. <laughs> or when we die, X, Y, and Z will happen to us. So we have to take his warnings seriously, basically. So yeah, 100%, as I said, 100%. Yeah, yeah, I can see you still want some time. So I'll give you that, that time, you know, to, to like do any more research. You want to come back again with questions, you're always welcome, you know. 
as long as you're sincere, because this is what I see. When someone's sincere, when someone is genuine, is respectful, you're always welcome to come back, you know? And yeah, whenever you're ready, you want to take that step, you know, because a lot of people are saying you're ready. I don't know. <laughs> so whenever you want to take... <laughs> Whenever you want to take that step, inshallah, you're welcome to come back and take that step, you know? At least how often do you um, live stream? At least once a week I try. I, I don't think like in the last, I don't know how many months, it's always once a week minimum. It's always in uh, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, UK time, you know? Okay, he disappeared in the right time. <laughs> okay, no problem. It was the end of the conversation. I know you cut off, but it's okay. You cut off in, in the right time anyway. <laughs> hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Did you want to say anything? No, I, I, I read the comments. Hundred percent. I read the comments and everything, and yes. I kind of feel a lot of conviction to, to just to finally go with it and just you know just do Mashallah, it. Um, so Mashallah. Mashallah. Okay. <laughs> My, they're doing they're doing great work, you know. <laughs> okay. <Mashallah. laughs> okay. So let's do it. Inshallah. We'll do it. In, we'll do it in English first, and then we'll we'll do it in Arabic. So you see, guys, this is your work, not right. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's say, I testify. I testify. There is nothing worthy of worship. There is nothing worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. And servant. And servant. MashaAllah. Okay, we'll say the same thing now but in Arabic, yeah? Very slowly, right? Okay, we say. All right, all right. Ash, ashhadu. Ashhadu. An. An. لا لا إله إله إلا إلا الله الله وأشهد وأشهد أن أن محمدا محمدا رسول رسول الله الله ما شاء الله that's it brother you know <laughs> this, well, it's simple it's simple brother but والله well, these words weigh so much on the scale on the day of judgment right now maybe they're, they're they're light to say but they weigh so much because these are literally the differentiation between someone entering paradise or not entering paradise there's a differentiate differentiation between someone testifying uh, giving god his right and someone who's not testifying giving god his right so these these words that you've said is the key for you entering paradise and and anything that that you may have done that is evil in your past allah Azzawajal forgives it and anything, as long as you now you start to take things as much as you can, seriously, you try to work as much as you can, slowly, right? Do not overwhelm yourself. You send me your details, inshallah, on email, like your, your location, right. your WhatsApp number, etc., and your name. And I will connect you with our convert team so, so they can mentor you. So you take things step by step in the beginning. You're just on, on learning more about the Quran and Islam. And in the same time, uh, praying, learning how to pray. Nothing else. You don't focus on too many things. Don't overwhelm yourself. Do not take too many people as sources of knowledge because that's what confuses people in the beginning, right? Mm. Just focus on one or two people like to learn from uh, the important things that are to do with religion. So that's why we're connecting you with people. So you didn't go overwhelmed at the beginning and then people start confusing you here and there. So right now it's like, this is what matters. You took this testimony of faith. It's a difference between you and thousands of people. You know, thousands of people are watching. But how many people are actually there who took that step and move, moved forward? And came closer to, to to worship in their creator, you know. So it's something that Allah chooses. You know, He chose you. He wanted to guide you. You know, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you're guided today. You know? So I'm very happy for you, brother. You know, may Allah. No, no, thank you so much. You like, no, 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 I appreciate it. No, no thank you so much. Mm. I appreciate it, brother. So okay, brother. No, no, thank you so much. Okay, salam alaykum. See you, bro. Inshallah.